everyone, welcome to this video on Cybersecurity Interview Questions Part 4. Here you will be acquainted with several interview questions on cyber attacks. Our experienced instructor Bipin will take you through these questions. So let's get started. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Let's start off with the first one. The first question is what is SQL injection? SQL stands for a structured query language which is a language that is used by most of your databases or your relational databases uh, the, the variations of your database would be mysql microsoft sql oracle sql uh, you'll have ibm databases all of these databases utilize the structured query languages to interact with the applications now all of these databases have their own syntax so you'll have to study most of these databases based on which applications and which databases you want to provide security for. But as the name suggests, SQL injection vulnerability or a structured query language injection vulnerability is where a user can maliciously inject a SQL input or a SQL statement in a query and send it to the database and evoke a response, response out of it. So this vulnerability is not specifically to the database it uh, the vulnerability lies more in the application and the coding of that application so when the application receives a query which it needs to be forwarded to the sql uh, database we need to configure at the application level of what queries are allowed and what queries are not allowed so there are different various aspects of how to manage a sql injection vulnerability but the basic flaw lies in the application where uh, invalidated input is accepted and sent forward to the database where the database might confuse it into an executable statement and thus create a response that was not warranted. There are various types of SQL injections uh, as shown on the screen in band SQL injection where you can look at an error based or a union based injection, a blind SQL injection where it is either boolean based or a time based attack and then an out of bound SQL injection essentially you're looking at databases and you're looking at application security uh, where you want to encourage secure coding practices so in unvalidated input is mitigated the next question is what is spoofing now in spoofing you're basically assuming the identity of another person so here the attacker pretends to be some other person or an organization and sends you an email that appears to be a legitimate email it looks almost genuine it has been constructed to replicate what a genuine email would have been and it is very difficult to spot a, a fake one there are different ways to identify whether an email is genuine or not but that's for a different video moving on to the next question what is a distributed denial of service attack or a ddos attack now generally a denial of service attack is an attack where legitimate users are prevented access to the resources that they legitimately can access right so for example if it is a bandwidth based attack the attacker consumes the bandwidth of the network in such a way that there is no more bandwidth left for legitimate users to access the network now a single device may not be able to generate that much amount of uh, traffic to consume the bandwidth of a huge server thus the attacker will construct a botnet and through that botnet they will launch a distributed denial of service attack to the target victim right so a botnet uh, there are two uh, terms that we want to look at over here the first term is a bot and the second one being the botnet itself bot is a software that once installed on a victim's machine allows the hacker to uh, send remote commands to that machine that will make it do uh, generate some activity once we have enough machines uh, on which such bots have been implemented, the collection of these machines would be known as a botnet. So an attacker would then instruct this entire botnet to start generating data traffic to be, to be sent to the targeted network or to the targeted server, which will then bog down the server, thus crashing it and preventing users from accessing that particular resource. The next question is how to avoid ARP poisoning or ARP. Now, first let's understand what ARP is. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol, which is a protocol used by computers to communicate over the network. Once your computer boots up, 
it starts a discovery process of identifying its neighbors. So if I'm in a particular subnet, my machine will proactively send out ARP requests and address resolution protocol to find out which other machines are within the same network and which are live. Once it sends out a query, a live machine will respond to that query along with its MAC address. This information is then stored in what is known as an ARP table or an ARP table on the machine's cache. So whenever my machine now wants to send out a packet to this particular machine, it will go to the ARP table, it will identify the IP address and the associated MAC address. It will print that onto the data packet as a destination uh, IP and destination MAC and send that uh, packet across to the switch. The switch will then identify the MAC address and uh, send the packet to the relevant machine that is connected to that particular switch. Now to confuse the switch into sending it to a different machine, the R poisoning attack is created. This attack is generally launched to create a man in the middle attack. Now to prevent this R poisoning from happening in the first place, there are three different aspects that we can utilize. First, we can use packet filtering which will filter, filter out and block packets that are the same source address data. So you have identified some malicious IP addresses and you want to block out some IP addresses. So you're using a packet filter firewall where you have instructed the firewall to filter out certain packets originating from particular range of IP addresses. This firewall and this technique will then block those kind of packets coming in. Second, keeping away from trust relationships. Organizations will develop protocols that do not depend on trust relationships and thus you want to keep this protocol away from there. Once you have created a trust relationship, uh, these machines should not be sending out ARP requests to other machines in the first place. Since uh, the trust relationship has been, has been defined and these machines know whom to communicate with, such kind of protocols should then be disabled. Or you can use ARP spoofing software. So there are some there are softwares out there that will look for ARP spoofing and prevent that from happening in the first place. So if somebody has sent out a spoofed ARP packet, that packet will be picked up by this software and it will be mitigated. Uh, network visualizers like Glasswire, antiviruses like Sophos, uh, they have inbuilt capabilities of identifying uh, ARP uh, spoofing attacks and mitigate them in the first place. In the next question, we are going to discuss what is ransomware. Now, ransomware is a type of malware that blocks victims to access personal files and demands ransom to regain access. There are three categories. Before we go into the categories, let's just revisit what ransomware is. Let's start with the word malware. Malware is a malicious software that poses as a legitimate software, but has a payload that will have a security impact on your machine. So in this instance, uh, viruses, Trojans, all of these can be classified under malware. So can ransomware. A Trojan is a software that will give you a backdoor access to a, uh, to a particular device. A virus will do some destructive activity on that device. A ransomware will basically encrypt the data of that particular user from on that particular machine, thus rendering that, uh, that data inaccessible to the users themselves and in turn will demand a ransom to provide access to that particular data. So the three types of ransomware, the first one is scareware, which uses social engineering to cause anxiety or the perception of a threat to manipulate users into buying unwanted software. So this preys on the gullibility of humans, where you can uh, see a pop-up appearing on your screen, which can scare you into believing that you may have been attacked or there is a virus on your machine and then instructs you to download a particular software to mitigate that particular virus. Now, the malware will be in this software that you will be downloading and then a ransomware will be installed and your data will be encrypted. Screen lockers, uh, where locking users' computers by preventing them from logging in and displaying an official looking message. You will see a screensaver once you boot up, which prevents you from accessing the login page. So it will not allow you to log into your own machine, but it will give you a warning that your data has been encrypted and you need to connect to a particular email address and send, bit send bitcoins over there uh, to get a decryption key to access your own data.
and then the encrypting so ransomware displays a message demanding payment in return for the private asymmetric key which is needed to de decrypt the symmetric keys for encrypted file so once your files have been encrypted you might just have a blank screen in front of you where you'll receive a warning message uh, where it instructs you to pay up a ransom in bitcoins or in some cryptocurrency to some particular digital e-wallet which is not traceable and once you make that payment, they will send you the decryption key and then you can access your data. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Then talking about the uh, next question, what is the difference between an active and a passive cyber attack? Now, when we talk about cyber attacks, cyber attack is uh, activity that is caused by a malicious user who wants to try to get access or do some security incidents on the victim's devices. So there are two ways that can happen. It's either in an active manner or a passive manner. In an active manner, the intruder attempts to disrupt a network's normalcy, modifies data, and tries to alter the system's resources. So this is more active, where the attacker will proactively uh, try to destroy the network so that communications fail, or they might try to modify the data where uh, we're using a ransom where they can encrypt it or they might delete that data using a virus or steal that data using a Trojan or they might even alter the data uh, so that it is no longer trustworthy. Whereas in a passive attack, the intruder intercepts data traveling through a network. Here the intruder eavesdrop but does not modify the message. So they're just listening in. They're just uh, observing what is going on. They're not manipulating the data. They're not stealing anything. It's just that they are monitoring the activity that's going on. Then the next question, what is a social engineering attack? Now, social engineering attack is a people-based attack. The victim here is the human by itself. The vulnerability also lies in the human. It may be executed through a computer, but end of the day, the gullibility is of the human. So it is the art of manipulating people so that they end up giving up confidential information. Now, we always read in the papers where somebody got manipulated, their passwords got hacked, and somebody's life savings got wiped out. Right, because they shared the OTP with someone or they shared uh, the password with someone. Now, creating a scenario where these people will fall prey to this attack and share this kind of personal information to unknown people, that is where the social engineering attack comes in. Creating that scenario, which will ensure that these people give out this confidential information. Now, there are three categories in this attack. Well, the first one is a phishing attack, second is a spear phishing attack, and a third is a railing attack. Now, phishing attack is basically a generic attack. It is targeted to the uh, world at large. Whoever falls prey to that attack will be a victim. Whereas a spear phishing attack is a targeted attack towards a specific individual or a group of individuals or towards an organization. So there is a lot more research that goes into spear phishing where you analyze the victim, you try to figure out what their vulnerabilities are and you tailor make or you customize the attack to that particular vulnerability. Once you have that attack, you launch it against those people, those people will then fall prey to this attack. And a whaling attack is where you're attacking uh, top level executives. So the C-level executives of an organization, politicians, movie stars, wealthy and powerful people. Uh, so any of these people, when they're attacked, it will be known as a whaling attack. Next question, what is man in the middle attack? Now, this is something that we had touched base when we talked about ARP, where the ARP poisoning attack needs to be executed to leverage a man in the middle attack. Now, in the man in the middle attack, the attacker attacking computer takes the IP address of the client. Unaware of this, the server continues to communicate with the attacker. Now, if you remember uh, in a previous question, we have also talked about spoofing. So in this scenario, uh, attacker has spoofed their IP address to replicate themselves as a genuine client. And now with that spoofing in mind, they might either through a R poisoning attack or just because of the spoofed IP address become a man in the middle. That means that they are now eavesdropping on the conversation between the actual client and the server by posing themselves as a server. In this scenario, the attacker is now a go between between the client and the server and can eavesdrop and can copy the data if they want they can modify the data as well so as, as you can see on the screen the attacker becomes man in the middle which means that they are now 
eavesdropping on the conversation that is happening between the client and the server. The next question, who are black hat hackers and white hat hackers? The main thing is the differentiation between a black hat hacker and a white hat hacker. Now, a black hat hackers are skilled individuals who illegally hack into a system. The motive behind such an attack is mostly for monetary gain. These individuals are known, also known as security crackers. Now, if you look at your criminal hackers, those who have malicious intent, those who do hacking for the intent of personal gain or for the ma matter of disruption. The main thing that black hat hackers lack is authorization. They are not authorized to do the activity that they are about to do and they are going to get unauthorized access to devices or to data which is going to cause losses to the organization involved. Whereas on the other side, a white hat hacker are, are also known as ethical hackers. These are the individuals who discover vulnerabilities in a computer network and they help the organizations mitigate these vulnerabilities. They help the organizations defend themselves from black hat hackers. So the main difference between these two types of hackers, a black hat and a white hat, is the intent and the authorization. So black hat hackers will have malicious intent. They will try to personally gain from that attack from by finding out vulnerabilities. They also will not have authorization to conduct whatever activity they are doing. Whereas on the other side, white hat hackers will be hired by organizations. They will be provide authorization for certain activity that the white hat hacker can do to find out those vulnerabilities. Once those vulnerabilities have been find out, found out by the white hat hacker, they will report it to the management and guide them in implementing security controls to mitigate those vulnerabilities. The main difference between a black hat and a white hat is the authorization and the intent. The next question, what are honeypots? Now honeypots are a very interesting device that can be introduced in a network. Uh, these basically are decoy servers that are implemented in a network to attract the attention of an attacker. It is there to lure an attacker uh, into uh, attacking that particular device, thus creating a security blanket, blanket for the rest of the devices. So if an attacker has been able to bypass a firewall and is now trying to scan a particular network, when they scan, they will come across various devices that are there in the network. They will then proceed to do a vulnerability scan on these devices. The honeypot at that point in time will provide as an uh, approve as an attraction to these attackers because it will demonstrate some vulnerabilities to the hacker, which will divert their attention. So these vulnerabilities are simulated on these devices. These actually do not exist. But the moment the attacker then starts interacting with the honeypot, the honeypot will identify that as a malicious traffic and will warn the, warn the administrator about a possible attack that is going on. The administrator will then investigate through the honeypot of what activity is going on and then reconfigure their security controls to block the attacker or mitigate the attack itself. Right. So it is more of a decoy server uh, that will showcase or simulate some vulnerabilities to an attacker thus to lure them and safeguard the rest of the network. And with that, we have come to the end of the Cybersecurity Interview Questions Part 4 on Cyber Attacks. I hope it was informative and interesting. If you have any questions related to the topics that were covered in this video, please ask away in the comment section below. Our team will help you solve your queries. Tune in to Simply Learn to watch out for more cybersecurity interview questions. Thanks for watching, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.